guys, Planet Airsoft here, and today I have a really special review for you guys. This is the Tokyo Marui M4 CQBR Recoil Shock. Before we jump into the review, if you guys would like to see what comes in the box with this beautiful gun, be sure to check out my last video, which is the unboxing of this gun. Pretty simple, and yeah, let's get started. With that being said, let's start off with the externals of the gun. Unlike most TM products, this gun is full metal, with the exception of the stock, pistol grip, and a few other minor components which gives it a really nice weight and a solid feel. However, it is a little bit rear heavy due to the fact that the recoil system is located in the buffer tube. Starting with the front of the gun, if you live in a country that requires it, this gun ships with an orange flash order, which is removable to expose your 14 millimeter negative or counterclockwise threadings, which is standard to most aftermarket suppressors and flash hiders. Moving further back, you have a full metal A-frame style sight, a full metal quad rail, and an included vertical grip, which is plastic. Moving further back, you have an upper rail for optics, as well as a removable metal rear sight. By the way, the sights are adjustable for both windage and elevation. Pulling back your charging handle exposes your unique hop-up system, which is designed to hold up to the recoil of this gun, and it does a very good job of that, too. This gun is completely non ambidextrous with the fire selector and functional bolt catch. We'll go into more detail about that later on the left side only, and the mag release is on the right side only. To round off the externals, you have a standard pistol grip as well as a Voltar stock, which I really like the look of, and it also has a little compartment right here for batteries and such or other small items. This gun is available in two tone, which is the one I have right here, and full black. Accessing the battery compartment on this gun is really simple. You simply push the fake screw located on the back of the butt plate push it in and pull out in the butt plate, which exposes your not so usual battery compartment. The reason why it looks like this is because this gun uses a proprietary battery system. You have to use this weird looking 8.4 volt Tokyo Marie Satma battery, which is not included with the gun. You have to purchase it separately, but it's really cool the way it works. It just slides and clicks right into place and you're ready to go. No wires or anything. As cool as this battery system may be, these batteries retail for approximately $45 a piece and that's before shipping. If you don't want to use this expensive battery method, they do make an adapter that's available for purchase separately, which allows you to use your standard batteries. One of my favorite features on this gun is the fact that the gun stops firing after your last BB is fed. Allow me to demonstrate. It won't fire anymore until you hit the bolt release. You are able to dry fire the gun by holding down the bolt release though. Which is pretty cool. However, this cool feature does come with its drawbacks. The main drawback is the fact that it uses proprietary magazines. Let's talk about the magazines a little bit. The proprietary magazines are available in both mid-capacity and high-capacity magazines. Let's start off by talking about the high-capacity magazine. I don't have one to show, but it's just a standard high-cap magazine. Holds around 400 rounds, has a winding wheel on the bottom, blah, blah, blah. You guys probably know this by now about regular high-capacity magazines. However, the high-capacity magazines does not allow for that bolt catch function for stopping the gun after the last BB to work. The mid-capacity magazine is made out of metal, and you can switch between 82 and 30 rounds, which is really cool. 30 rounds is obviously for Molson or realistic training, and 82 rounds is for regular use. And it does feature a follower, so you feed every last BB, which is a pretty cool feature. If you don't want to use a proprietary magazine system, they do make an adapter that allows you to use standard AG magazines. However, this will disable the bolt lock function. This gun comes out of the box shooting at approximately 275 FPS, but as anyone who's familiar with Marui products knows, their legendary hop-up makes up for the low FPS. And now for the pros. Before we get there, I just want to mention that I went ahead and accessorized this a little bit, just for your viewing pleasure, and got rid of that ugly flash header, the orange one, I replaced it with the included metal one, and I gotta say, it's looking pretty damn awesome right now. So without further ado, let's move on to the pros. Pro number one, the body on this thing feels extremely great. It has a great feel, there's barely any wobble, and it has a great weight to it. It's really well weighted out, even though it is a little rear heavy, like I mentioned. For number two, the range and accuracy on this thing is unreal. It's barely matched by any other stock gear subguns. And trigger response is really, really good, which is very important to semi-only player like me. But on full auto, the rate of fire with the 8.4 volt battery is pretty good, like you guys heard from the shooting video, but I don't care about that because I don't play full auto anyway. Um, the recoil, that's definitely a pro. It's so much fun to use. However, the recoil is not too much to the point where it won't be practical anymore. Like, I find gas web rifles, they're very fun to shoot, but practicality-wise, the recoil is just insane and if you're not using it for real training purposes, if you're using it for a regular airsoft game, just have fun. I mean, I don't know. I, I find it to be pretty impractical. However, this is the perfect balance between fun and practicality, so really happy with that. As much as I love this gun and as happy as I am with my purchase, I would not recommend this gun to, towards everyone. I would recommend this gun to someone who's looking for a really high-end AEG that has a really nice, solid metal body that'll perform like a dream out of the box without being upgraded, and you're willing to spend a pretty penny for it. As well as, of course, you have to be familiar with Marie's and their sub-300 FPS and you have to be okay with that. Then maybe this is the gun for you. Otherwise, 
there are a lot of other AGs out there that are a lot cheaper that are still that are still really really good. This is just this is just for someone looking for the best of the best and is willing to spend extra money for it. And that's about it for this video, guys. I hope you found this review helpful, and I hope you found it interesting. Thank you so much for watching. This has been a really fun gun to review. And if you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share, and stay tuned for future videos. Bye, guys.